Coming up on the DMT One to One Show, episode 72 on the 28th of August 2014, an interview with Nick Jones, a senior VP of International at Vivo. This week's show is brought to you by Play MPE, providing secure music distribution and promotional services to the world's largest labels for over 10 years, with templates that dynamically integrate metadata, artwork, text, social media and video to deliver a rich multimedia experience to recipients. Find out more on plaympe.com. Hello everyone and welcome to the DMT One to One show and it's a pleasure uh, today to be here in Cologne at uh, CO Pop uh, 2014 and I'm here with uh, Nick Jones, the VP of International at Vivos. Hi Nick and thanks for joining me, how's it going? Pretty good actually, pretty good, enjoying Cologne. Yeah, it's great to have you, and uh, you know it's uh, it's been a year uh, almost uh, since I did uh, that panel with Eric uh, when you first launched uh, here in Germany. So first of all, let's talk about Germany. How how's it been going so far? Look, really, really happy with where we're at. It's been a, a, a market which, as you know, took us a long time to uh, to get ready to launch here. We, as you say, in uh, in a month or so's time, we come up to a year. We're happy with where we are, but we're never happy with where we are, if you know what I mean. We always want to, to, to grow and, uh, and, and be bigger. And to that end, I think uh, we still feel we've got a long way to go. But the business is up and running. It's established. Um, we have our staff in place in Berlin and uh, very happy. Yeah. Cool, awesome. So, actually, breaking news from the last 24 hours that you just uh, talked about uh, um, uh, in the past hour in, in doing your panel is the fact that you had a, uh, your new record uh, for uh, video views on Vivo in the last 24 hours. So, can you tell me a little, more, a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So, um, a year ago, uh, Miley Cyrus very famously uh, swung on a wrecking ball, and in 24 hours, nearly 20 million people went to Vivo to watch her video. Um, we're now, as of literally today, uh, Nicki Minaj released Anaconda yesterday, and in 24 hours we're up to uh, 22 and something million. So uh, Nicki Minaj is now the, uh, the number one uh, artist in the sense of her video got the most views globally in 24 hours. And it uh, be interesting to see um, Miley got to 100 million views in less than six days. It'll be interesting to see whether that carries on with Nicki over the next uh, six days. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, so talking about uh, sort of how Vivo is uh, evolving as a platform, you, you talked about the presence of uh, Vivo on a variety of different devices. And so, uh, first of all, how has the debut of uh, Vivo on uh, the Apple TV and other uh, sort of TV devices impacted the, the, the company and, and the viewership? Well, I think it's impacted us in a, in a lot of ways, actually. Firstly, it's impacted us because it's the fastest growing uh, platform uh, that we have, so um, Apple TV, um, the Samsung Smart TV um, application, these are all growing, uh, Roku are all growing tremendously quickly, um, but I think probably a bigger impact on the organization is the, um, is the excitement around Vivo on that sort of large screen format where it's more community and it's more about watching things with your friends and your family. And I think we're very conscious that that is a platform we really want to grow on or continue to grow on. And that also, I think, lends itself to thinking more about the kind of content that we build as well. We're very excited that in the UK we're just about to move to some very new presenter-led formats. And I think that's the first time globally that we'll have done that. And again, that kind of lends itself to the big screen and, and that environment. And I think you'll see more and more of that from Vivo over the next uh, year or two. And how's the Vivo TV uh, sort of uh, a lean back experience going? Because I know that you launched a channel, I'm, I'm not sure if it was US only or uh, if it was international, but uh, where it was more, it was program content essentially, yeah. where people could just tune in and, and, and watch that. Yeah, so Vivo TV, um, we will in the very near future be announcing some, some uh, developments to Vivo TV. Initially, we launched um, three channels. Um, uh, and we localize for the US and for Germany. Um, now, Vivo TV is available anywhere uh, that we're live on Apple TV, but obviously it's not localized. What we need to do is localize it by market. Localize for, for Germany and the US, but we want to localize it in other markets, and you'll see some announcements from us about that soon. 
Yeah, cool, awesome. And so, uh, talk. Uh, let's talk about uh, mobile. So, mobile has become a massive part of, of the platform. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, only 35% of people in the US uh, now uh, watch uh, view videos uh, on desktops, and it's uh, it's coming up to the 50% mark uh, in, in in Germany. So, 50-50 uh, between people that watch it on traditional desktop uh, computers and people that watch it on mobile or or um, TV screens. And so, how do you see that evolving, and how does that impact your uh, revenue models as far as advertising is concerned? Are, are you happy happy with uh, where you are now uh, when it comes to exploiting mobile uh, platforms for advertising? Um, how it affects us in the future is I think that move is going to continue. Um, again, you look at TV versus mobile. Mobile is a very personal experience. TV, as I said, is a more community-based experience. So I think that in itself is interesting. Um, uh, we're, for example, in uh, Germany is just over 50% uh, mobile and connected devices. The UK is just over 60%. Um, the rest of Europe is around that 50-50 mark. Um, in terms of monetization, I think it's really good that the monetization is growing now almost as fast as the platform is, but I say almost as fast. I think there is still work to be done with brands and with uh, the advertising market on being able to monetize those uh, um, uh, mobile devices. I think there's still an element of, um, you know, of, you know, a pent up growth there and we know that money follows eyeballs and I think you know there's always a lag and there's still a lag but no I'm pretty happy with where it's at but I wouldn't be pretty happy if it was still at this level in a year's time, if you know what I mean. Right. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that's evolving and it's taken the likes, even, you know, Pandora has been around for such a long time, but it's taken them a long time to figure out uh, mobile advertising. And it seems like they are, they are getting there uh, kind of now. The, the figures are starting to improve quite a bit. And so, uh, you know, looking at the outlook for Vivo as a standalone platform, I, I know that you've pushed quite a bit in the last uh, uh, couple of years. Uh, I mean, of course, in Germany, you, you have to because uh, it's a Vivo.com. It's, it's the main destination for the videos. But also in the U.S. is to, to make Vivo more of a destination in itself uh, as opposed to relying to, to have it on YouTube. And so how is that process going and uh, what are you doing in order to, to sort of make people go to Vivo or download the app rather than relying on YouTube to, to watch the content? Well, I think we've, you know, we've, we never, we've never seen ourselves as relying on YouTube. We're really happy with being a partner with them. Um, but I think um, if you think about um, things like uh, on um, Apple TV, that's very much a Vivo experience. And so I think you'll see those platforms will, will help that happen. Um, but the simple fact is, around the world, the place where people most naturally go to to watch videos is YouTube, and that's fine. We're also um, on many more platforms globally now. For example, in the last year, we're now working with Yahoo so that... Uh, um, Vivo is on uh, Yahoo in quite a lot of European countries now and I think our model's always been that we want to make music videos available on any platform. Um, yes, we have our own Vivo destinations but the main thing is we want people to watch the videos and if that's on YouTube or somewhere else then that's great too. That's awesome. And so uh, let's move on to talk about original content. Of course, that's been a big uh, uh, factor for the growth of Vivo in the last uh, couple of years. And uh, uh, the Vivo Lift uh, uh, you know, uh, program has been a great success. Uh, and so uh, can you tell me a little bit about what's been happening internationally uh, around the Vivo Lift uh, program, some of your most successful acts? Uh, and then we can move on to talk about Germany, perhaps, and, and, and the latest and the first act that you had on, on Vivo. Yeah, so firstly, I mean, Vivo Lift now... Um, I guess it's established within the music industry um, and certainly any artist that we've worked on, uh, worked with on Vivo Lift, I think understands, uh, understands that in fact Sierra Kid, who's our first Germany Vivo artist just talked about the fact that it's kind of the ignition and the way that uh, their, their career can, uh, can take off. Um, I guess I also want to talk about Vivo Discover which is uh, um, something that we launched in the UK at the beginning of the year and you'll now see being rolled out around the world. A, I'm very excited because it, its genesis was in the UK and that's fantastic uh, for the work that the, the team are doing in the UK. But also, I mean, Vivo Discover, if you like, is almost the step before Vivo Lift. It's, it's artist's first video. It's, you know, re really right at the beginning. And I think, you know... Uh, the most exciting things with, with any music discovery um, relationship or artist is to see them grow and become successful. And, you know, we had Sam Smith singing in our kitchen at Vivo in the UK back in last October, you know. And now I say Sam Smith and everybody out there is nodding their head going, well, we know who Sam Smith is because he's huge, you know. 
and that's just fantastic. And he was one of our ten to watch back at the end of last year with through Vivo Discover. And that, that kind of gives you more scope as well to push artists that may be uh, more underground than the ones that you've perhaps chosen for the Vivo Lift program so I, far. Look, I, that's absolutely right. And. Uh, and you know, I mean, you, you try and get it right. I mean, the the one I just talked about uh, in the presentation I just did here at um, CO Pop is, you know, Iggy Azalea. Who, when we worked with uh, with Iggy, you know, it was a it was a real a real, I guess, step in the dark for us. A female Aussie female rap artist, um, and you know, she's had you know number one for six weeks in in America. A huge artist and. Uh, and indeed, an artist that will be doing some even bigger things with uh, very soon. And I think, to that end, um, you know, we're very, very proud of both what we've done with her. I mean, Bastille is another artist that we worked with January last year. So what's that? You know, over a year and a half ago now. Yeah. Um, and they're in the process of well, they're touring America this uh, this autumn, and uh, and really, really become a, a major, major band. And that, you know, those those are the things that I think. And I, you know, first and foremost, I'm a music fan, and those are the things that make me excited, because we see these artists and we see the way um, that you know they grow and the way their popularity grows, and you know it's great to be a part of that. Yeah. And so looking at uh, yesterday, we had a, a whole day here at Seal Papa where it, that was based around uh, uh, brand partnerships, artists and brands, and all that sort of ecosystem. And the interesting thing about Vivo is that you're creating a lot of content that is uh, actually sort of in some way supported by brands, of course, through advertising. So so are you seeing more brands come to you uh, that want to align themselves perhaps with a you know, Vivo Lift artist or they want to be there at the beginning of that journey and sort of uh, somehow be involved uh, or is the process less direct in a sense? Oh no, no. I th look, I mean, number one, we don't give brands artist endorsement or artists don't give brands endorsement. So that's something that's very separate to what we do. Um, I think probably the the step that we've made the biggest or the biggest step we've made in the last year is the commercialization internationally is the commercialization um, of our platform um, vivo lift in the uk for example we got it sponsored for the first time this year by schwarzkopf um, and that's worked brilliantly um, we're just about uh, what next uh, next friday we have uh, we have a go show with Malibu with the Kooks um, at a secret location in London. Um, we, what we found in the last year, and maybe it's because we're better at what we do, or maybe it's that brands have now understand better how music, how, how, how they want to work with music and how they can interact with music, we're seeing an unquestionably huge increase in brands that want to be connected to music. And I think the biggest difficulty is anybody who's tried to as it were, sell music as a content platform to advertisers or brands previously, is there's that edgy side to music where you never quite know what's going to happen. And there are also, unfortunately, brands who only want to work with artists that are safe and that they know and that they like, and often that doesn't fit with their own audience. So we've seen a big change in that. And I would say I hope that's the brands and the and the agencies seeing that, but I think it's probably also that we've got a whole lot better at being able to explain it. Yeah, and, and also uh, it's interesting because uh, I guess we're talking about how incredibly you know all-consuming it is for a brand like Converse or, or Red Bull to uh, get involved at that level with uh, with with music, but uh, for brands that perhaps don't want to have that same level of commitment uh, uh, being able to advertise on Vivo it's, it's one step in that direction to reach a similar type of audience but without having to go through all the steps that those other companies have gone through yeah look I think there, that there's a great deal of truth in that the, the fact is that I, th I would challenge you to think of any other content genre where where people are more engaged than in music and music videos um, we always actually as a as a company internally we always talk about sport as an analogy and I love sport you know but I don't think I think the passion that, that music engenders in a whole audience you know in sport there's always two sides or sometimes more um, I think we see that 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 level of engagement as being a great way for brands to to attract particularly that really hard sort of hard to reach 16 to 24 audience and you know we're, we're in, into our second year of partnership with Toyota in the UK and that's been going really really well um, we've got I mean 
it, it's great to, to think that you know when we when we launched internationally three years ago, we would talk to brands and they might talk to us about five or ten or twenty k um, uh, campaigns. We now talk to brands about you know millions of euros or millions of dollars, or you know certainly hundreds of thousands. And I think to that end, that's really exciting for us. Yeah. And and finally, let's talk about independent artists. I know that uh, last year we already we talked about the fact that uh, uh, it is a very not that easy, but it's pretty easy for independent artists to get uh, on Vivo uh, via independent distribution channels, essentially. So how have you seen that adoption of Vivo uh, come through, and uh, have you seen artists uh, that haven't come from you know, major independents or, or major labels uh, flourish in the platform uh, through those uh, channels? Uh, absolutely, and I think... Uh i think that's one of the most important things when we look at our relationship with artists and and uh, and labels sometimes the independent artists you know have a much harder road to 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 get to that to that level uh, i mean the best example is sierra kid who we're working with here in germany as our first lift artist and that is uh, you know internationally our first really independent artist that we've uh, we put through vivo lift um, but there's no doubt that uh, we've seen uh, a lot of uh, a lot of artists And there, I don't know. I don't know if there's a move towards artists becoming more independent, but certainly we've uh, we're working, uh, as you said, through aggregated channels um, with uh, a lot of independent artists and independent labels, and we're very happy to be doing so. And I think, you know, that just recognises the whole uh, gamut of. Uh, of love of music that there is and you know for some people it's you know Nicki Minaj and Miley Cyrus um, and and for others it's you know Sierra Kid or Jungle or whoever it might be so I think those are really really important uh, uh, really really important uh, artists to have on on Vivo and to try and keep Vivo as broad as we possibly can. Yeah, sure. That's fantastic. So it's, uh, you know, from devices to original content uh, to uh, blockbuster videos, uh, essentially that's uh, sort of the, the way forward for Vivo at the moment. Uh, yeah. yeah, look, I, I th you know, the, the, the difficulty is having one brand that under, you know, under which so, so much sits. And that's something that we're constantly talking about and we constantly think about because we don't want to be just known for, you know, a Nicki Minaj video. Yeah. But then if that's the most video the most popular video in the world right now, then clearly it's going to be the most views on Vivo. Yeah. And uh, and that's where the discovery part comes in. So if you know if, if I if I am myself and I go on vivo.com and I'm already logged in, then I I shouldn't have to see the Nicki Minaj video if that doesn't fall within my taste. So totally. And I think personalization and that, that whole process, we're getting better at it, we want to be even even better at it. And I think, you know, creating a, an experience for for the fans which puts them in contact with with the artists and bands that they love but also gives them um, a funnel into a whole bunch of new artists i think you know, music discovery for me is what it's all about it's that moment it might not be it might not be a new artist but it's a new artist to me and i think to that end that's one of the the moment you know, things that i love most about music awesome well thanks so much Nick, for your time and uh, um, thanks so much for listening to the dmt uh, one to one show have a fantastic week and until uh, next time If you enjoyed watching or listening to the show and would like to find more, head on to digitalmusictrends.com.